Good morning. Welcome to Hardin County Commissioner's Court. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. It is 10 a.m. and all members of the court are present. Commissioner Feld is appearing by phone. And uh, so at this time, the meeting is called to order. If everyone will please rise for the invocation by Commissioner Kirkendall, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, and we're thankful for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the breath and life that you've given us, the abilities and the talents. Lord, we thank you for all of our elected officials, Lord, and all of our employees that work for the county. We pray your grace and mercy and covenant blessings upon them. Lord, we pray that you would be with, Lord, the coast of Texas and ourselves, Lord, as uh, this tropical storm uh, comes on and brings the rain. Pray that you'd be with all the first responders, Lord, all the elected officials, Lord, who have to make decisions. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, we pray that, uh, Father, that you would bring calm, uh, Lord, to our nation. Lord, we pray over this presidential election. Father, we just pray for safety for all the candidates. Ask you to watch over their families in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Item number three is approval of minutes of the September 8th, 2020 regular and special meetings as presented by Brenda Austin. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Item four, consider approval of request to cancel all registered claims from the September 8, 2020 regular meeting and approval of cash statement as presented by Deborah McWilliams, County Treasurer. Good morning, Ms. McWilliams, if you'll unmute. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good morning. I'm asking the court to release me of the liability of $1,150,543.80. On our cash report and general checking account, we have $11,904,707.39. In PECT pool, we have $321.09 for total and cash funds of $11,905,028.48. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number five, discussion and possible action regarding annual review and approval of the Hardin County Investment Policy by Deborah McWilliams. Um, on the investment policy, this is just the annual review and approval. Um, there's no changes been made or any amendments that need to be made at this time unless the court uh, feels like we need to. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously, except that Commissioner, we've lost Commissioner Pelt during that. I'm sure he will call back in just a moment. <clears throat> so just let the record show that Commissioner Pelt dropped off before we took that vote. Item number six, consider adoption of resolution 20-20, reappointing Deborah McWilliams as the county's investment officer pursuant to the Hardin County Investment Policy. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Roberts, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item number seven, discussion of possible action concerning adoption of the fiscal year 2021 county payroll schedule presented by Ms. McWilliams. Um, the payroll schedule is just the standard every other Thursday. There will be no special changes on it. We um, just like to put it out every year to make sure we have the 26th in the budget year and that everybody's aware of what the day is. So moved. Second. A motion by Commissioner Roberts, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, Ms. McWilliams. Item 8, authorization to pay county bills as presented. Angela Gore. Good morning, Ms. Gore. Good morning. The pretty I don't think that's necessary because we're not up and running on that, so just go ahead. As long as that other microphone's on, you'll be fine. Thank you. 
Motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Ms. Gore, on the item uh, that you talked about for the expenses through the uh, regional EOC, the 126 42167, is all of that covered by the CRS money? Correct. Coronavirus Relief Funds money from the CARES Act? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item number nine, special recognition of personnel for meeting years of service milestones. We'll start with Linda Austin. And then next will be Alvin Roberts. And then I'll come sit back down. You want to come up here in the middle? All right, Alvin, you want to stand there? I can stand anywhere. All right. We'll start with Linda and I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> didn't already know, Linda is my aunt. And she's been with Hardin County for 35 years. She said she feels like she just started yesterday. <laughs> she said she had a five minute speech prepared. Congratulations, 35 years is really such a, a, a great honor. And we appreciate all the work that you've done for Hardin County on behalf of the court. And uh, I know you have some things you'd probably like to say, so go right ahead. Thank you. I have enjoyed working for the county. start here at Hardin County as a jailer and then whatever else he wants to say about that. But this certificate says 25 years because we go by certificate, I mean by uh, consecutive years of service. Alvin had a break in time there at some point in time, but total he has 36, 36 years with Hardin County. So we really appreciate the job that Alvin's done for the citizens of Hardin County all these years and uh, does an excellent job as one of our county commissioners. And I appreciate him. I appreciate getting to work with him. So uh, we'll take a picture, then I'll let him say what he has to say. What? <laughs> Breaking the law. There you go. Do I have a hand sanitizer somewhere? Hand sanitizer? Yeah, you know. No, I'm sure you want to say uh, something, right? Your eyes are, closed. are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> 
pass card? I don't know. Here, let's do it again. Oh, here. Yep. Might have been close to the ribs. I might try it again. I guess I could have put my mask off. That's all right. Sign of the time. Thank you for protecting me. Yeah. Uh, as Wayne said, uh, <laughs> my my tenure at Hardin County was kind of my accident. Um, my wife worked with Arthur Guy at Ridge Weaver in Beaumont, and we had moved up here to Lumberton. And at the time, there was a mighty uh, population of Lumberton of 1,300 people. And uh, it was right at election time uh, in 1984. And uh, Arthur said that. Uh, he knew I'd, I'd worked at Jefferson County and uh, had got my jailer's license down there. And he said that uh, we sure could use some relief jailers. And he didn't say anything about being a relief deputy, which I could have done also because I had that also. But he said uh, we could use a relief jailer. So I came up to the sheriff's office and they handed me a big set of keys and said, okay, you're a jailer. And there was, I think, seven people in jail. And... Uh, you know, or that little kitchen up there. Everything was working good. Um, and uh, Sheriff Hoseapple at the time said, uh, yeah, you want to be a reserve? I think that would be pretty good too. So I became a reserve deputy jailer uh, and worked worked there. Um, and eventually uh, I worked with Gary Spears. Gary did the same thing I did. He, he worked at a, I, I was working at the time for Gulf State Utilities and Gary was selling uh, tobacco. And uh, we, we worked as unpaid deputies we filled in for anybody on vacation, uh, you know, whatever whatever shifts they needed, they would call us. Um, it, it was it was really a, a good experience. I enjoyed working here, and uh, eventually um, I ended up working here full time, uh, which is was in 1995. Um, I've enjoyed Hardin County, I've enjoyed the people, enjoyed working under Hose Apple and Sheriff Kane, and and now Mark Davis. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's grown. Like Linda said, things have really, really changed. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> before I was a full-time deputy here, I said, I'm going to throw one on Nubbin. Before I was a full-time deputy here, and, and uh, Nubbin was a full-time dispatcher here, or had come work there temporary dispatching and stuff. One night I was working step. Uh, we didn't work step very often. We didn't work radar very often. But um, I had been given a, a hand radar gun and told to go slow the people down out on 69 going into Beaumont. Very first car I stopped was Nevin Cooper going to work with DPS <laughs> <laughs> in a Camaro. <laughs> I said, what are you in a hurry for? So I'm late. I got to go. I said, okay. Yeah, you know, it's just, that's the way it was. We, we really had a good working environment. Um, it's still a good working environment in Hardin County. I've enjoyed being here the whole time. And now as a county commissioner, I, I'm enjoying this job also. But thanks everybody. And, I'm not long-winded or anything. I'm sorry. No, not at all. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is Brandy Stutz with the Justice of the Priest Office in Precinct 2. Judge Brewer is going to present her with her certificate. Brandy's got about a 20-minute piece. I hope y'all prepared she, she needs a bit. You got to talk to me. Practice it in our office this morning. Yeah. <laughs> now, Brandy's been with us with Harden County for 10 years. She's been with me for five years and done an outstanding job. She just basically brought the district clerk stuff down to a lower level than me, and I think it's something special over there. It's thanks to her because she does a great job, and I'm glad to have her. Now, uh, especially considering the first uh, three or four people that I hired, you know, didn't last very long. One of them lasted six hours <laughs> before her, and so another one lasted two or three weeks. So I, I have bad contacts as far as the <laughs> I'm glad it was me. I just was picking the wrong people. So I want to congratulate Brandy on 10 years and, and five with me. And I hope that she uh, stays with Hardin County for several more years. I was hoping that we'd get another 15, maybe 20. But it's possible that she could be looking at a different direction in the future. I don't know. That's just, you know, rumor. So it is now. <laughs> Do I need
also have Amanda Bracken with Road and Bridge 3, but she's asked for us to postpone that until uh, she wants to wait until Commissioner Pels is back and uh, present her with her certificate. So we're going to table item 9D until she can uh, come back and join us with the commission. Item number 10, consider and possibly offer possibly authorized to offer dual insurance plans to personnel through Texas Association of Counties Health and Employee Benefits Pool for the 2021 plan year. Debbie Mendesable, Human Resources Director. Debbie, are you here on the phone? Yes, sir, I am. Let me turn that up for everybody can hear you. All right, so we have uh, some information here in our packets, and I just received a message from uh, Ms. Ryan that said that uh, you told her that we have to take action on this today. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, in order for, if it does pass, PAC is going to need time to get it programmed for the new plan year, which starts December 1. And they wouldn't be able to give us until next week so, so that we could uh, kind of digest all this information? Uh, well, Orlando Espinoza is supposed to be um, in on the meeting on Zoom. Uh, he he could not. probably explain that a little better. He is not. Uh, he was giving me some options. He's not on. No, ma'am. Oh, okay. All right, so, we'll uh, just, uh, if you don't mind, Debbie, I'll just brief the court a little bit about what uh, this is, to the best of my knowledge, and uh, if you or anybody else uh, need to correct me, of course, you feel free to do that. This is an uh, alternate. Hello? hello? Can you guys hear me? I can now. Who's this? Okay, yes, this is Orlando Spinoza with that. All right. Orlando, you have provided us a quote for a dual option plan. Uh, from what I understand, this would allow employees that have uh, uh, dependents on their policies. This would give them an opportunity to pay a lower premium, but it also increases their out-of-pocket expenses or their uh, deductibles greatly. Is that correct? Correct. And it also reduces the coverage of their insurance, the way I understand it. Is that correct? Uh, I'm sorry, you said reduces what? Reduces their coverage. They would not have the same coverage under the plan that we have now? Okay, so just for the court, uh, this just came up rather quickly last week, um, mm -hmm. and uh, Debbie went to, to TAC to ask for this uh, additional option. Um, the uh, open enrollment starts here in just a few weeks, and as you heard uh, Debbie just say that uh, we would have to make a decision on this today if we're going to offer this additional plan to the employees. I can tell you this is something that the Sheriff's Office was interested in looking at. Uh, the sheriff had asked Debbie to uh, obtain this, and I had told the sheriff after talking to Debbie and Angela this morning that we would probably not take action on this today because there's going to be some questions I believe the court will have that we're not ready to answer just yet. And I say, when I say we, I mean the financial folks and, and human resources. So I was wanting to not rush through this today, but it sounds to me like we have to make a decision one way or the other today, which I, I, I don't like. <clears throat> Judge, I, I would prefer us not to have to make a decision today, even if we have to postpone it for a year. Well, we can either table this indefinitely, we can vote it down, or we can postpone it. We're going to have a special meeting Monday. We can postpone it if any tax says that's too late, and uh, we can postpone it for a year. Hey, Judge, if I can just really quick. Uh, sure. What I would say is if you guys want to table it, what I can do is uh, we can talk about this tomorrow when we have a to Ms. Gore and Ms. Uh, Mendesable this morning. Somebody with uh, family coverage, this will save them in premium $126 per month. $124.54. Even better, I mean, even more accurate, thank you. It would... That is with a $781.42 employer contribution. That's another decision that we need to make because the premium is $801.42 for an employee only. We currently 
pay $858 towards the um, employer's contribution towards our current policy, and so we need to decide how much we're going to pay towards the contribution to know what kind of savings we're looking at. Well, for that $124 and some change reduce in premium and increase, it doubles their out of, I mean, their uh, deductible <coughs> to 1500 and if it's uh, out of network, it, it uh, more than triples it to 4500 is that correct? That's correct? I just don't think it's a good plan. I move to table it indefinitely, and let's look at this again next year. Second. I have a motion by the chair, second by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Orlando and Debbie, I want to thank you for rushing to get this to us. I just don't feel comfortable uh, rushing forward today for sure, and, and even by Monday, I'm not sure that we would be ready to uh, make a decision on this, and it just doesn't really look like a good option for the employees. Trying to do something good for the employees, I think, would actually end up hurting some of those that chose to go with this alternate plan. And I just think it's best that we take our time on this and look at it next year. Judge, while we're on Not this. Not a problem. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Commissioner Cooper. Uh, while we have this uh, gentleman with us. Yes, sir. Did, did we recently have a, did you, did you form a committee for us to look into uh, our options on uh, medical insurance for employees? Yeah, I want to say the that, last couple that was before November of last year, right? Yeah. You might have the answer, or this gentleman might have the answer. Why, why are we at a, such a high rate right now? Why can't we get anything lower for our employees as far as premiums? Orlando, are you able to uh, hear Commissioner Cooper? And if so, can you answer yeah. that? Not a problem. Um, so I will say you guys do have a very, very rich plan at the $500 deductible. Um, so anytime that you guys are going to have a, a rich plan, that is going to increase the um, the premium just naturally. And then also because, uh, so if you look at the um, your family deductible, it's $1,500. So that reason alone is going to be why that, that premium is going to be, you know, a, a lot higher for the, for the different tiers. Uh, so that... The fact that you guys have such a rich plan, that is going to be the, the driving factor as to why those rates are, are higher in those family tiers. And I do believe, let's see, if I'm looking, um, let's see, I'm pulling up your renewal right now just to, because I want to say you guys did receive a, a pretty favorable renewal this year. Yeah, so this year we only saw a 1% increase um, on the plan, um, so which means that, that that means that your plan is actually running about what it should be, which means that we are collecting about as much premium as we are putting out, or as much as we are paying out in plan. Uh, so, um, and this is kind of what I, the conversation that I was having with Debbie was that by adding this plan, uh, the second plan, um, you know, it, it is it is vastly different. Um, it does have a much larger um, deductible. Uh, but the hope is that we will see more people add more dependents, and so then we will start getting more contributions uh, in return. And so then, if we can do that, when people are adding their children, usually children don't have such high claims. So then we're adding more contributions, but then we're not adding a lot of pain. So then we can actually reduce your loss ratio, which will actually, in the long run, be able to help us bring those costs down all on both plans, which is the hope. Um, that's the hope of why we want to add those. One, to give us an option that's a little bit more affordable, and then two, in the long run, if we are adding more um, children and more uh, families, make more family coverage, then we are collecting more. We're reduced, you know, the hope is that we're reducing that, um, that loss ratio, and then that is the very large factor in how you determine your renewal. Um, so if we can reduce that loss ratio, then we can actually start reducing those costs and then eventually get you guys down to where even your $500 plan is, you know, at a more affordable rate as well. I think I followed you somewhat there on your explanation of, I think as a county administrator, this court has a responsibility to make sure that we get the best that we can for our employees and I do understand the concern coming out of the uh, sheriff's office because some of those new jailers over there, if they have their family on the current plan that we have, one of their paychecks goes to insurance. 
and I understand your explanation, and it, and it did make sense. Uh, but I don't. I, I'm agreeing with the judge. I don't think this $124 a month is going to make a difference with the higher uh, deductibles and everything for us to go this route. But thank you for your explanation. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. And this is. I'm, I'm happy to have these discussions with you guys next year um, with a little bit more time and kind of give you guys as many options as we can to try to work with you guys to, uh, you know, ultimately help you guys meet your goals um, and getting you guys a little bit more affordable plans. So, uh, you know, after this, I'm happy to continue this discussion with you guys to um, help you guys meet that goal. Orlando, if our renewal's in December, when is the best time to start having these talks? Is it around May or June? Uh, so in May or June, May is when we put out the renewals for our 10 one groups, uh, so for our October first group. So um, yeah, around that time, we can definitely just start looking and start having these discussions as to what we're looking at. And then we'll have a better idea of kind of what your claims are looking like for the, for the year. Um, so yeah, so around May, June, we, that's definitely a good time for us to start having these conversations. Okay, if you don't mind, go ahead and pencil us in because we're going to want to we're going to want to look at that. Commissioner yes, Roberts, sir, yes, Commissioner, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Commissioner Roberts. I was on the committee that looked into uh, our insurance back a few months ago. I guess it's been over a year ago, actually. Almost a year, yes, sir. And uh, what I saw uh, was not not contradicting what you just said, but uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield's making a ton of money off of us, and we're not going anywhere near our what what they're having to pay out on claims and. Uh, I saw that ratio. I don't. I don't have the exact figures in front of me, but uh, that, you know, it, it was just ridiculous. But uh, I don't know if you're looking at those figures or what they make off of us every year. But it was. It was. I, I'm going to say close to half a million dollars, and that's that's just unreal that we have to pay in that much, and uh, they're not paying out that much. Yeah, I can look that. I can look that up. That's a conversation we can have and kind of look at uh, what the loss ratio is. So you know, because of your size, loss ratio is going to be a, a, a bigger factor in what we look at for the renewal. But then also on top of that, what we look at is we look at uh, different uh, demographic factors, area factors. So we look at you know probabilities of claims. Uh, so there's a lot that goes into the actual renewal uh, when we're looking at you know how much we need to collect. Um, so we can, you know, we can have these conversations and figure out kind of what we can do um, to help. So I can, let's see, I'm looking it up right now just to see kind of where you guys are sitting at. You guys are sitting at about an 84, actually no, it's 10. Yeah, 84.4% loss ratio, which is it's good. I mean, that's why you know we were able to give you guys a 1% um, increase this year. Um, now, of course, we look at the 36 months, we look at the 12 month loss ratio. Um, so that's the 36 months, that's the long term loss ratio. And then let me look at your 12 month loss ratio just to kind of give you guys a And of course, your your loss ratio was based off of a 12 month loss ratio that we did back in, I believe it was June. So we're adding a couple, uh, a couple more months of data to this current one. So your current 12 month loss ratio is sitting at 98.17%. So our break even point at that um, is about 94%. So at 94%, that we build in um, about 6% for you know the admin cost. Uh, so which is a lot better than if you went out to you know Blue Cross Direct or Aetna because they're building in profit margins which we don't build in. So their break even point is about 80%. So we're our break even point is about 94%. So which means that right now your current 12 months is actually a little bit higher. So we're actually losing a little bit of money in this uh, for over these past 12 months. Which is why you saw a one percent increase and not, you know, a, a bigger number because it, you know it's not we're not losing a bunch of money. It's just you know in over thirty six months we saw that there's actually you guys are actually below you know a good amount below what our break even point is. So um, so this is what you know this is where it all comes down. To. We're trying to get that number to go down because a 
we can get that number to go down, we can actually give you guys better renewals, and we can actually reduce those costs, which we have at a good number of groups this past year who did receive rate decreases. So that's where we want to get you guys. We want to be able to, to get you guys to the point where we are giving you guys uh, rate decreases every year. Um, and so that's what these conversations that we have are about, about kind of figuring out what can we do to get those rates to go down. Uh, because at the end of the day, we want you guys to have, you know, lower rates. We know that, you know, budget is tough for you guys, and, you know, even a 1% increase is still an increase, and you guys still have to figure out where you get that money from. And we totally understand that, which is why our goal, which is, you know, me and Ashley, um, your wellness consultant, our goal is to help you guys reduce costs and reduce your overall spending so that that way you do have more flexibility in different areas where, you may not have, you know, the ability to pull that money from. So um, these are the conversations that I'm happy to have with you guys to, to help you get to that point. Orlando, <clears throat> we appreciate all the information, and we do have you on record saying that next year our rates are coming down, so we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, Sylvia B is here. He's going to put it in the paper as well. <laughs> we, we appreciate your time here today, and we look forward to getting with you again next spring. Not a all right, uh, I don't remember if we voted on this, so let's take a vote. This uh, motion was made by the chair, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. Any other discussion on item number 10? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Number 11, presentation by the Grant Administrator, MPTX Associates, to provide update on ongoing disaster recovery projects. This will be presented by Mr. Greg Wabi. Mr. Wabi, you should be able to share your screen with us, and I'll also put it up so yes, everybody sir. can see. And we are also live streaming on Facebook. And uh, as I get set up here, So uh, over the last few years, we've been working with a number of uh, state and federal agencies to obtain as many uh, or funding for as many projects as possible uh, that are in the disaster recovery and mitigation uh, realm. And so I've got a lot of good things to report. There's a number of things that are happening recently that, uh, that we want to uh, update you on. So uh, I'm going to be starting with uh, just a recap of some of the uh, grant programs we're talking about. And I'm going to go over to a map that shows uh, some of the project areas we're talking about. I'm going to start with the, uh, what we're calling the FIF program. Uh, that's uh, a new program type uh, that's administered by the Texas Water Development Board. Uh, the grand total allocation for the state of Texas is approximately $770 million. Uh, those were uh, competed for uh, across the state uh, in the form of bridged application, which was submitted earlier this summer. Uh, in terms of cost share for this grant program, this is a mix of grant funding and long-term uh, zero-interest loans. Uh, we just, in the last few days, got the results back from the submittal of our bridged application. There were 285 applications submitted across the state. The top 147 uh, applications have been approved for funding or at least uh, encouraged to, uh, to take the next <coughs> step towards uh, application approval. <coughs> Hardin County's application was for what we're calling an eastbound storm drains project, which I'd be happy to share additional details on the location and the framework of that. Uh, but the results were that this project uh, ranked number three out of 92 construction projects 
submitted to the FIF program. That's in the top 3% of all construction projects submitted statewide. Got some very strong feedback, and so I, I want to compliment everyone uh, that worked on that. <clears throat> when it comes to the funding itself, uh, the Hardin County's grant funding of $6.2 million was the seventh largest award out of 147 uh, award uh, amounts approved. And so, uh, yeah, the amount uh, that they're putting on the table is significant, and uh, we're getting some excellent feedback from, uh, from the Water Development Board. So that's the FIF program. Moving on to what we're calling the MIT program. Uh, that's a community development block grant uh, for mitigation. Uh, these are HUD funds. Uh, that are administered by the Texas General Land Office. Um, it's also a, somewhat of a new program type. It was created in 2019. Uh, the grand total amount of funds for this program is $4.3 billion. And we're currently in round one of that funding, which is the competitive application stage. <clears throat> the cost share for MIT is 100% uh, federal with no local match. Hardin County's project applications to this program uh, are currently being developed. So we're working on that very hard at this time. Uh, and the deadline for those applications is October 28th of 2020. So that's the MIT program moving to uh, what we call uh, Disaster Recovery Infrastructure or, or Harvey Infrastructure. Um, once again, a, a community development block grant for disaster recovery administered by the Texas General Land Office. We're currently in round one of funding, which is uh, considered allocation funding. Uh, Hardin County has been allocated $8.5 million uh, to uh, identify infrastructure projects that qualify for this. Uh, the cost share is 100% federal with no local match. And we've been granted uh, an opportunity to update our application to this program. Uh, the deadline to do that is November 15th. And I'll be uh, showing you some project ideas that we'll be uh, talking about. Last uh, for now <coughs> is uh, what's referred to as the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, or HMGP. Uh, those are FEMA funds, uh, which are administered by the Texas uh, Division of Emergency Management, or TDEM. Uh, those are competitive applications. Uh, we have submitted four uh, total projects for, for funding. Well, uh, in fact, four projects have been selected for funding through this program, I should say. Uh, thus far, three of those uh, four projects selected for funding have been awarded. We still have one project to go. I'll be talking about that on the next <coughs> round. Uh, the cost share for this particular program is 75% federal, 18.75% state, and 6.25% local. Uh, there's uh, more to be discussed about each of these programs, but I just wanted to provide a recap for what some of these acronyms stand for and what it means. So with the next slide, you can see a, a map of the county. Uh, I zoomed in just a little bit. You can see it, it cuts off just a, a bit of uh, the western side of the county and uh, portions on just a little on the east and, and to the south. You'll see uh, call-out boxes or arrows pointing to the general project locations uh, for a number of the applications um, and projects that we're working on. Uh, we have those color-coded across uh, three different types. Uh, uh, the, the boxes you see that are in maroon are uh, projects that have either been awarded or are slated uh, for awards. The, uh, the yellow boxes indicate uh, current project ideas or applications that have not yet been submitted, and the white call-out call out boxes are uh, a few project areas that we're looking at for, um, for potential future application uh, development. So as far as it, how to uh, tackle these things and, and talk about each one, probably move, uh, start with the, the maroon ones, uh, the, the active projects, working from uh, starting over on the west. We have a it's called a Harvey DR project for a Saratoga detention pond. That's approximately $3.1 million uh, flood drainage infrastructure project. Uh, just to the west of that, the next one over is uh, what we call Saratoga 4x4 fire trucks. Uh, those are some uh, funding requests for brush trucks that will uh, make it possible for um, a 
fire departments to attack fires with, um, with the best equipment available. Um, another one of those similar uh, four by four uh, fire trucks projects is currently uh, identified in, in Coombs. Um, just below that, you'll see uh, we have what's called a, an HMGP FEMA P361 Hurricane Safe Room. That project has been selected for funding by the Te Texas Division of Emergency Management. We're working through uh, some fine, finer details about getting that award uh, approved. And Greg, if I can stop you for a minute, nothing's changed since you updated on that, uh, on that project last time, other than you've been answering some questions they have, right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, the structure of, the, uh, of that project application is still uh, approximately 4.5 million. We're in uh, discussions with TDEM with regard to how we go about uh, tackling that award, the timing of it, and whether to phase that project or not. Yes, sir. And the reason I wanted to say that is I think the last time we discussed it, we, we thought that about 45 days later, we'd be back here to make a decision again. I think we're past that time, and we don't have the information necessary to go forward and make any decisions on that project just yet. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Just wanted to make sure to update everybody on that. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just to the west of that, we have another maroon box, uh, CDBGBR acquisition. Uh, that's uh, an item that's actually gonna be distributed out across uh, various uh, locations in the county that are to be determined. But we went ahead and plugged it in on the map. Uh, just to the east of that uh, is a radio tower project, which we're quite proud of. It's, uh, it seems to be moving forward uh, for funding. Uh, that is a uh, radio tower that located at uh, one of the precinct barns uh, there in Silty. <coughs> uh, important uh, upgrades to our communication system throughout the region. So that's a, a, a DR project. Uh, moving just to the southwest of that, we've got an HMGP uh, flood buyout project, approximately 20 properties, and that's also not in a specific location. Those, those properties are spread out across the, uh, the floodplain. Uh, directly south of that is a, an HMGP project, uh, Lumberton Detention Pond, uh, located uh, directly north of FM 421 and on the west side of uh, Lumberton. That's a project we're, uh, we're kicking off, we're uh, getting the engineers working on some of the uh, uh, planning that's necessary to uh, actually get that construction going. <coughs> going to mention the one that's directly south of that, an FMA flood buyout that's about 12 properties with repetitive losses. Uh, many of them are located in the, uh, uh, the Pinewood uh, vicinity, so that's why uh, that, that box is located there. And then to the last, all the way over to the east side, uh, we have our eastbound storm drains project through the FIF that I outlined earlier. Um, that's a $77 million project currently hoping to get the cost down a little bit. I think that's going to be important. Um, but so far, we've gotten excellent feedback from the Texas Water Development Board. Very positive uh, results. We're hoping we can work with them to uh, make that project a reality. So with that, covered some of the active projects. Um, I'm going to go back over some of the yellow boxes just to brief everyone. Uh, starting back over on the west side of the county, uh, we have Road improvements for Old Tower Lake. <clears throat> Just directly to the southeast of that, uh, a potential project for um, the Jackson Creek Detention Pond on the upper portion of the Jackson Creek watershed. Moving up to the north part of the county, uh, we have road improvements on the west side of Four Store Road and then a separate uh, project location for road improvements on the east end of Four Store Road. Directly south of that, once again, uh, road improvements project in the McNeely Settlement uh, general area, and then also uh, road improvements uh, uh, on Billow Road. Now, I want to re reiterate, those are project ideas. Those are going to be decisions and prioritization that you'll have uh, before you to consider um, which ones are uh, should be pursued in the form of applications. Got one more to talk about. Uh, it's in that uh, category of consideration. That's the uh, Mill Creek uh, Detention Flood Control uh, Project. Um, I might actually skip over one. Uh, 
just to the west of, of the Mill Creek one we have. It's called the Pin Oak Ranch, or it's also known as Beaumont Creek uh, Detention Pond that is located on the north side of 418, um, north, of, uh, north of Coons and north of Searcy. So those are some of the active project applications. There's going to be some talk and, and prioritization and consideration on the importance of those. Uh, I won't uh, probably bother everyone uh, by going into great detail about the rest of these white boxes, which are project ideas. But uh, just to, so you know that it's out there, uh, there's um, a conceptual design for a large reservoir on the west side of the county. Uh, we also have a scope, some detention ponds in the area of, uh, the, to the, the west side of Sour Lake. Uh, also some uh, additional detention uh, for the west side of Pinewood. Uh, Upper Boggy Creek uh, detention is another location that we've actually some good potential there. Uh, Black Creek detention. And then the last one is uh, Cook, Cooks Lake Road, uh, Road and Bridge Project. So uh, with that, uh, before I turn it over to questions and comments, I do want to compliment uh, really all the departments with the county. They've been tremendous uh, in, in their skills, in their work. Um, and of course, the commissioners and Judge McDaniel have been fantastic in their leadership. Uh, we've got a lot of things working right now. Thank you, Greg. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding the presentation? Greg, I just want to say I appreciate the work that you and Amanda have been putting in in your firm. Uh, since I've been on the court, I think this is the most comprehensive plan that's ever been presented to our court. And thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Amanda, then, do you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Come I'm going to say hi, Greg. Lots of hard work. Good job. Amanda, you have anything you want to add? No, sir. Just I would really appreciate Greg and all. I was getting emails from him late last night, which is not <laughs> uncommon, and we appreciate him very much. Anything further? Thank you very much, Greg. All right, we'll move on to item number 12. <clears throat> Discussion and possible action to approve job description for registered dietitian in the Hardin County WIC Department. Requested by Latasha Jones, WIC Director. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Cooper, seconded by Commissioner Roberts. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 12, discussion and possible action to approve job description. I'll just get that. Number 13, discussion and possible action regarding a refund exceeding the $500 limit, account number 005225-002550 for the tax year 2019. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper, and that total is $536.29. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 14, discussion and possible action to approve the revised plat for William Lee Subdivision, Dana Lane Extension, located in Precinct 3. Ms. Young? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is a subdivision that was actually approved in 1903 in Tower Lake, um, but they never did the development. Um, now they're wanting to do the, the road development. They have not changed any lot lines. Um, we did have to go back and approve a 30-foot road instead of a 60-foot right-of-way, but we did have them add drainage. So um, I talked to Mr. Pelt about, about it, and he approves it, and the engineers and we do have the uh, letter from Jeff Levins here with LJA that uh, says he recommends it for approval. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number 15, consider and possibly authorize request by Harden Jefferson ISD for contribution in an amount not to exceed $7,500 as reimbursement for the purchase of 450 devices for wireless connectivity of students participating in remote learning as a result of COVID-19. This would be utilizing coronavirus relief funds as authorized by the CARES Act. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Kirkendall. And as far as the amount goes, do y'all want to uh, contribute the full $7,500? And let me just say why I'm asking that. Uh, the uh, school district uh, provided us a copy of their invoice uh, for this 
purchase, which is $47,025, and they're just asking for some assistance. But they've asked us and Jefferson County, as well as the cities of China, Bevel Oaks, and Sour Lake. And uh, I just felt like if we contributed up to 7,500, we would be doing our share for the uh, citizens in the unincorporated area of Hardin County. This also allows Hardin Jefferson ISD, uh, if they are able to obtain any funds through the uh, CRF, it will also open them up to other grant funds uh, through another source through, I think, TEA, is that correct? Uh, to help with uh, this reimbursement as well. So that was the reason for the 7,500. And to, uh, to my knowledge, he has not gotten a commitment from anyone else for any contribution. It's under the CARES Act. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this would not uh, come out of the general fund. It comes out of the CRF, and, and uh, Mr. Tucker has uh, confirmed that this does uh, meet an eligible uh, expense for that CRF money. Okay. Yes, good. Okay. 7,500. Yes. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number 16, discussion and possible action to enroll all Hardin County employees and elected officials who have access to a government computer system or database into the free cybersecurity training course for 2021 provided by Texas Association of Counties as required by House Bill 3834. So moved. Second. I motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, second by Commissioner Roberts. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 17, authorization for county judge to sign in local contract with the city of Beaumont, city of Port Arthur, Jefferson County, Jasper County, and Orange County. This is for inclusion of the Southeast Texas Auto Theft Task Force. So moved. Second. Right, motion by Commissioner Roberts, second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 18, permission to purchase a 2020 John Deere 310L backhoe loader, VIN number ending in 4157 for Road and Bridge 3, in an amount of $76,300. This purchase will be made utilizing a cooperative purchasing program. And if the purchase is approved, this would also need approval for the following budget transfer. 77,000 from line item 0176235570, equipment purchase. I'm sorry, I said from, but that's two. It should be coming from 0176233334 materials and supplies. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall to approve the purchase and the budget amendment. Second by Commissioner Cooper. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 19, discussion of possible action on recommendation from the Evaluation Committee concerning statements of qualification received concerning engineering services pertaining to projects for the Community Development Block Grant Mitigation Fund, also known as CBG-MIT. Ms. Sims, good morning. Is it unmuted? Yes, ma'am. Qualification statements for engineering services were opened on September 18, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the Purchasing Department and Front Office. Myself, Erica Singletary, and Stacy Eckert were present. We received eight. Dixon Shipman, LJA, Sigma Engineers, KSA Engineering, TLC Engineering, Arsenal Wilson and Cole, Mark Whiteland and Associates, and Sean Byrne and Polk. The Evaluation Committee was Commissioner Kirkendall, Judge Chris Ingram, and Laura Tate, and Sean Byrne and Polk with the uh, firm that scored the highest. Move to approve. Second. A motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, second by Commissioner Cooper to approve the recommendation by the Evaluation Committee of Sean Byrne and Polk. Any discussion? I want to thank uh, the committee for serving. As always, we appreciate your time. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number 20, present results of bid submitting for overlaying approximately 14 by 768 feet on Sunflower Lane, 12 by 445 feet on Bluebell Lane, and 12 by 425 feet on Huckleberry Lane, all located in Precinct 2. Ms. Sims? Bids were opened on September 18th, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the Purchasing Department Front Office. Myself, Erica Singletary, and Stacy Eckert were present. LD Construction bid $3 a square yard, and CMM Construction went to $275 a square yard. Move to approve the low bidder. Second. A motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, second by Commissioner Cooper to approve the low bidder, which is CMM Construction. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item 21 present results of bids submitted for overlaying approximately 12 by 2040, I'm sorry, 2,450 feet on Buck Gilmore Road located in Precinct 2. Ms. Sims. This bids were opened on September 18th, 2020 at 2 p.m. in the purchasing department of front office. Myself, Erica Singletary, and Stacy Eckert were present. LV Constructions bid was $3 a square yard, and CMM Construction, $275 a square yard. Move to approve. A motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper to go with the low bid of CMM construction. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Just for the Mr. record, this is uh, a road that was damaged uh, in the Harvey flooding, and so we'll be using Harvey-related money to fix this road. Great. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Item 22, consider and possibly approve memorandum of understanding between Hardin County Constable's Office, Precinct 4, and Hardin Jefferson ISD regarding Deputy Constable Scott Ali serving as a school resource officer for the 2020-2021 school year, effective September 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Roberts, second by Commissioner Cooper. And the Constable's here. you have anything you want to say? No, I appreciate y'all. It's, it's working out well. <coughs> so we should be working on the amendment for a possible second officer, but they did a very good. Great. We appreciate you providing that service to the school. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item number 23, discussion only of any item not on the agenda without taking any action. I would like to uh, make sure that everybody on the court is agreeable with a special meeting on Monday, September the 28th at 9 a.m. Is that good for everyone? And the reason for that meeting is to assist the uh, WIC department with spending some state funds on a vehicle purchase that they need. And of course, if anybody else needs anything on that agenda, Please send it to the agenda email address by noon on Thursday because that has to be posted by the end of the day Thursday. Or no later than 9 a.m. Friday, but we're going we're gonna to post it at the end of the day Thursday. Then also we need a special meeting at 9 a.m. on October 1st. The main uh, reason for that meeting is to uh, conduct at least one budget amendment that needs to be done that cannot be done on the fiscal year 21 budget until October 1st. Is that date and time good with everybody? And again, if anybody needs anything on that agenda, if we could receive that by the end of the day Friday, is that right? Okay. And then I believe Mr. Uh, Wabi uh, has told us that we need a public hearing before our next regular meeting, and this is to uh, receive citizen comments on the CDBG MIT application, is that right? That is part of the process, yes, sir. So uh, if we could do that at 9 a.m. on the 13th, which is our next regular meeting, does that sound good with everybody? And if you could work with uh, Amanda and Misty, I think that has to be in the paper today. Isn't the deadline today to get that in the paper? All right. And then we all got an email yesterday that Commissioner's Court did from uh, Allison Bass and McGee regarding the 2020 redistricting. And one of the questions he asked in there was whether or not we would be putting together a citizen committee. And I think that's something that we want to do. Is, is that the pleasure of the court? Yes, sir. We did that last time. So if y'all don't mind, if y'all would start thinking about some citizens that would be good to serve on that committee, and I'd like to have uh, two commissioners uh, serve on that committee as well. If uh, y'all will let me know who's interested. I know Commissioner Cooper's told me before he's interested. Are you still? Yes. Uh, I'd like to, because yeah. I think. Uh, oh, man, i got to decide between well, the two. <laughs> I know I've got the least populated, so I know it's going to be taken in some more areas, so I would like to be in on that. Well, okay. No matter to me. Yep, we got time to think about it. So let's think it over. And uh, but in in the meantime, if y'all would be thinking about some citizens that would uh, be good to serve on that committee. How many y'all uh, citizens? What do y'all think? I wasn't how many here last them? time? I, mean, I think they had one from the, like each city, like uh, it was one from Lumberton, one from Silsby. Uh, I think there was one from Coons. I don't know if we had that paperwork, but. We can look and see. Basically, what, what are y'all thinking? Maybe one from South seven Lake ish. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Or is that too many? Or not enough? Okay. All right. Well, if y'all just be kicking that around, let's uh, be ready here before too long to, to get that going. Um, the uh, person that's been working the screening table at the front door, I'm thinking about uh, ending that at the end of next week. And if anybody, any department head or elected official has any questions or would like to discuss that now we can do it or we can do it anytime between now and, and say early next week 
uh, I will have that person come over from the health department. That person's still going to work here in the health department doing data entry and some other things that they need at the health department. I will have that person come over as needed for court or any other times where we're going to have a lot of people coming in. Otherwise, we've got the machines now, and I, I just plan to put a sign on the uh, screening device that just says if the alarm goes off, go to your car and call this number. We'll decide what number that is. Uh, somebody recommended yesterday that we have to call Janice in the county attorney's office. <laughs> That's I thought I'd go ahead and say that. But uh, we'll, we'll come up with a number for that person to call. It'll probably either be the county judge's office or somebody at the health department, but we'll, we'll work on that. Did you say the county attorney was on? Yes. I want to congratulate like her for being uh, one of the finalists for the uh, next vacancy on the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she appreciates that. She didn't unmute. No, she's probably laughing if she's, uh, she's unmuting now. Go ahead. <laughs> she said, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last but not least, if uh, the emergency management coordinator can you just give us a quick update on Tropical Storm Beta? He uh, participated on the 10 o'clock call, is why he wasn't here in the beginning. Yes, sir. So, as of 10 o'clock, Tropical Storm uh, Beta has now been downgraded to a depression. Uh, in our area, we're looking at still one to five inches of rain uh, through Thursday. Uh, if the rain band set up over us, obviously double that last number, we could be looking at, at 10 inches of rain over the next two days. A uh, wind gust possible of 20 to 40 miles per hour. Uh, storm surge, uh, which actually does affect us in, in a, a certain way, of two to three feet uh, in, in the areas where storm surge uh, is normal. Uh, saltwater barrier is at a, a minor flood stage currently, uh, which it, it has uh, risen since this storm started. Uh, all the other waterways in the county that are monitored are, are at normal or below normal heights. So, any other questions? No, we just want to make sure we don't need to get sandbags ready, and it just sounds like we're still good on that. Yeah, that I'm going to say no on sandbags at this time. Okay, great. One quick note, I know everybody's ready to leave, but on the screening, uh, the employees that are doing the self-screening forms and emailing them to the uh, health department, if we'll keep doing that through next Friday. After next Friday, I'm gonna leave that up to each department head. If y'all want your employees to continue, continue doing that, the health department will continue taking those and, and reviewing them, but I don't think that it's necessary that we continue to do that. So after next Friday, which is October the 2nd, we'll stop doing that as well. To my knowledge, uh, all of this screening that we've been doing over the past several months has caught uh, two people, one employee and one citizen, uh, with a high temperature from coming in. And I believe both of those, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe both of those persons tested positive for COVID. So it has caught two, but uh, it's just a lot of extra work that we're all doing. And most of the people who have tested positive for COVID, whether they're employees or citizens, uh, have not had the fever or answered yes to any of those questions. It's just uh, one of those things. So. We're going to discontinue doing that, but if any department head or elected official wants their employees to continue doing it, the health department will take it. And again, if anybody would like to discuss that, I'm, I'm open to it. Anybody have anything else? Commissioner? Any of the officials present? Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kirkendall, seconded by Commissioner Cooper to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much for your time. <laughs>